Hey there, welcome, or welcome back if you've been here before. If you have, we really appreciate you returning and joining us. Today, we're going to make a po' boy. Why is it called a po' boy? I'll probably ramble on about that while we cook it. But for now, let me get some stuff together, and let's get started. See you in a minute. Alright, now if we want a po' boy, the first thing we're going to need is a remoulade. Remoulade. Everybody pronounces it different. I've been away from Louisiana a while, so sue me. Sorry. But uh, remoulade, remoulade. Uh, it's a sauce, basically. Now then, I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I know this is not the traditional way to make it. This is a quick and easy version. We're making a po' boy. We're not making something for, you know, royalty. So, um, first off, we need mayo. Mayo is always a good start for most things. Uh, we're going to then need to add to that some mustard. Now, I'm starting out with some French's yellow mustard, but and this is one that I'm adding now that I've come over to the UK. I'm also going to add some of this Trackleman's hot mustard. Because, well, we like it to be hot. So, uh, I'm going to throw some of that in there. I'm also then going to throw some Tabasco Sriracha in there. And then some Tony seasoning. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the mess that I made just off camera when the uh, mustard splattered. There you go, you're a behind the scenes mess of the day. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix all this up together. Now, yes, traditionally these sauces would be uh, homemade mayo and mustard cooked out for a long time, blah, 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 all that good stuff. And yeah, it is amazing when you want to do things like that. They'd also have some extra ingredients in them, some more spices. But this is going to give you the idea of that sauce real quick, real easy, for a nice sandwich. There we go. And the po' boy... Uh, the sandwich, the poor boy's sandwich, that is where the name came from, uh, was always about using the cheap things you had around. And uh, although we're not exactly doing that anymore because, well, what used to be cheap isn't cheap anymore, we're going to still make the sandwich because it still tastes amazing. We've got our sauce ready. Next, I need to grab some stuff for a breading mix. Or, in this case, it's actually more of a, well, more of a beer batter. Be right back. Alright, we've got our bowl. We're going to add some flour. We're going to add some Tony's. Other Cajun seasonings do exist. I just don't know why you'd buy them. Well, unless you can't get the Tony's. Some salt. Yeah, I know you're always all getting on to me about the salt, but today it's definitely going in there. And then we need a bit of beer. Wouldn't be much of a beer batter without beer. Now, this is going to foam some as we stir it up. That's just the reaction. And we want it to foam because that's what helps make our bubble airy and light. And I'm using a fork to beat this in, just because it again helps with that getting air into the mix. We have 
got our batter done. I'm now going to take some large prawns. Uh, and these are not really large prawns, but uh, they're what is classed as large prawns in the UK. They're not what we would call jumbo shrimp. Uh, but we would usually use smaller shrimp for this kind of a thing anyway, so that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and stir those into the batter, get them ready to go into the fryer. Then I'm going to go get the fryer sorted, and we'll meet you over there. All right, we've got the fryer heated up. What I'm going to do now is I've got a slotted spoon. I'm going to pick up a bunch of shrimp in it, and I'm going to shake it over the bowl a bit. I know you guys can't see this because you can see the fryer right now, but basically I'm shaking that spoon over the bowl to get most, but not all, of the extra batter out. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take that clump of shrimp that we've got on the spoon and throw them on in. And for this, we do not mind if these clump up a bit and we get some kind of battery piles of shrimp. That is perfectly fine for what we're doing here. Might even make it a bit easier for us. So I'll go ahead and I'll get some of these cooked and I'll get right back with you. I've got my shrimp fried up, and like I said, we've got some nice chunks of shrimp together there in a nice crunchy batter. We've got our shrimp, we've got our sauce. I could grab a nice uh, roll right now, throw those on there, and it'd be a po' boy. It'd be a shrimp po' boy. But, I'm going to go ahead and add one more thing to it. And this is something that I struggled for a while to get in the UK. Okra. Uh, I'm starting to find it a few more places, but for a long time it was hard to get. And it's these little star-shaped rings. And you see, I'm cooking something green. I'm going to drop these into the same batter that we cooked the shrimp in and fry them off the same way. All right, I went ahead and fried up the okra. It comes out looking a bit like that. And then, although I didn't show it on camera, I also took some very thinly sliced onions, and if you haven't guessed by now, I threw them in the same batter, and then fried them off as well. So now, I've got shrimp, okra, onions, I've got my remoulade sauce, and I've got some seeded rolls. I've sliced them, and Here's one of those little secrets that they never tell you about. Before you put your sandwich stuff in there, reach in here and compress the inside of that crusty roll a bit. That's going to give you more room for shrimp and stuff. Now then, I'll go ahead and I'll show you how we put one together. Alright, so I've got my roll here. I'm going to go ahead and grab some shrimp. Stuff those in like so. I'm then going to take some of our okra like so. I'm going to top with some onions that will actually fit in here. That's going to go right there. And then, go ahead and drop that sauce. 
Some people will say that you should also put some sauce in the roll before you put any meat in. Uh, if you really like the sauce, I say definitely go for it. Um, I didn't do it this time because, well, I just didn't. But there we are. All right, I am here with sandwich number two. Uh, sandwich number one went to someone off camera. Uh, wasn't going to keep them waiting while I finished what I was doing. But uh, there you go, the poor boy. Poor boy. The uh, dock workers of New Orleans uh, traditional sandwich. It's an interesting history if you look back into them. Uh, dock worker strikes and... Uh, you know, picket breaking and all sorts of interesting stuff. Uh, not History Channel here, so I'll leave it at that. Look into it though if you're interested because it's a lot of fun and the sandwich is really good. Mm. And messy. <laughs> I'm going to finish eating this. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.